And before I even get into this video, I just want to say balance sheet is extremely, extremely important. Whether you are a business owner, balance sheet, you have to know balance sheet. You have to understand it. You have to build a balance sheet for your business. Or whether you're investing in stocks, you have to know what a balance sheet is. You have to understand a balance sheet so that can help you make good, wise investment decisions. And just in general life, understanding a balance sheet, if you can create a balance sheet in your personal life, that's a great thing and that will help you out reach your goals later on down the road. And a stock investment. Like I said, you have to pay attention to that because if you think the company is going to earn that profit they're earning forever, you're probably mistaking. That would be nice, but they might come on hard times. And what if they do? You have to have a margin of safety and the balance sheet can provide that margin of safety. Let's say we find, you know, uh, our, our growth stock. So we, we find something that seems really interesting to us and we start researching it, okay? So you, you might have heard a stock mentioned on the YouTube channel, uh, on, you know, CNBC or, or wherever it is, okay? So you hear about this stock, XYZ, and you're looking at it and you're like, hmm, this looks pretty dang interesting. So what I like to start with is the business first, okay? Do not worry about this. Oh, this is such a cardinal sin of stock market investing, in my opinion. People worry about financials, statistics, metrics before they worry about the business. I can always tell a lost investor when they bring me a stock and they start out with telling me the trailing 12 month PE and the price to sales ratio and intrinsic value and blah, blah, blah. And they haven't even talked about the business yet. That's a lost investor, okay? You always, always, if you really want to make a lot of money in the stock market over time, you better always start with the business first, okay? Guess what any great investor business person will ever tell you is the most important thing. It's not some magical metric. It's not some financial statement, okay? All that stuff's important. But always the most important thing is the business first, okay? So you need to understand that business on the highest level possible. You need to understand that business in a way an executive would, for instance, okay? And the only way you're going to be able to get to that level where you understand the, the business on such a high level, uh, the only way, okay? I'm going to be very clear about that, is by doing the research work. You must read the 10K annual report. You must read the latest 10Q. You must listen to the latest conference call, not once, but twice, okay? Always listen to conference calls twice. I've been in this game for over 10 years now. I always listen to conference calls of companies I really care about twice, okay? Or a company I'm gonna buy. Why? Because a conference call is 30 minutes to 60 minutes long usually, okay? Usually minimum 30 minutes. Usually, you know, upwards of 60 minutes, right? There's a good probability that something happened in that 60 minutes that all of a sudden you stopped paying attention to what was going on in that conference call, right? All of a sudden, you know, your kid walks by and you're like, oh man, you know, uh, all of a sudden you start playing with your kid and you got the conference call, but are you really paying that close attention to what's going on? Or all of a sudden your friend comes in the room or, or your dad or, or, you know, a family member or a friend or somebody and they say something to you and you're like, oh yeah, da, da, oh yeah, we'll eat dinner at this and this time. Okay, now you just lost concentration on what's going on there, man. Like, this is why you have to listen to it twice. Not only that, and not only is it like distractions from other people or pets or whatever that can, you know, uh, kind of take your mind off things, but also you can hear something on that, that conference call. This happens to me all the time. This is, you know, the biggest thing that happens to me while I always listen to conference calls at least twice is there'll be something mentioned in that conference call. And all of a sudden, I'm like, my mind starts going boom, 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 boom over here. And I start getting, a fi you know, like fixated on whatever I just heard. And my mind's over here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's a big, big business opportunity. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to think about that. And I'm starting to add up numbers. Oh my gosh, if they expand over here, who are the competitors over there? Oh, they're trying to do this. And all of a sudden, there's, meanwhile, the conference call's still going on. And my mind's, you know, 10 miles over this way now. And so whatever is going on in the ears, it's not, I'm not even listening to it anymore because my mind's so far over there. And all of a sudden, I finally finished that thought after a minute or a few minutes go by and then I'm back on the conference call again but meanwhile three five minutes of the conference call I just missed that something very important could have happened in that three or five minutes on the conference call okay something very very important so you know you know this is vital stuff guys you have to listen to it twice okay how to get a car loan okay basics you need 
you're going to need to show proof of income. So you're going to need to show at least your last two pay stubs from your workplace. If you're an entrepreneur and you own your own business, you're going to need to show your last two years of tax filings. But most people will fall into the group of being um, employed by somebody else. So just your last two pay stubs are usually sufficient. You're going to need to show bank statements. You're going to need to show proof of address, at least a few different forms. And a few other little minor forms, but that's the major stuff you're going to show. Now, what are they looking for? Why are you showing this stuff? One, they want to know that you've been at a residence consistently recently. So if you've moved, let's say, five times in the last two years, that's not going to look great on your credit as far as them judging you if you can get a car loan. They're looking for consistency. They're looking for you to have stayed places years or at least several months. Maybe you moved recently, but hopefully that last address you were living at, you were there for at least a couple of years. They're looking for someone that's not just switching states, switching jobs, because that's more of a risk to them than someone who stays in one place and works a consistent job and has the same amount of income coming in every month and whatnot than someone that's just here and there and then they're gone. That's more of a risk to them. As far as uh, pay stubs go, they're looking for, well, one with the workplace, they're looking for work history as far as how long you've been with that company. The longer, the better, generally. If you switch workplaces a lot, that's going to scare them because they're going to think, okay, maybe they're getting fired a lot, which isn't good because what if they get fired and they can't find a job? Well, then the car loan's going to come back to us and bounce back on the bank. So they're looking for job history and hopefully if you've just changed jobs recently and you're trying to get a car loan, hopefully that previous job you were there a while or that previous previous job you were there a while. That's a big thing. That's a really big thing that they're going to look for. They're also looking for how much are you making. Now, they don't care so much about if you have some huge income. What they care about is they're going to ask you your expenses and they're going to ask you ex your ex expenses versus what you're making. So if you're making $700 a month, let's say, that's your income. So it's not very much. You're just working a part-time job or whatever. But you live at home and your only expense will be that car bill. And that car bill is going to be $300 a month. That means they have another $400 on the side that you can spend on other things. So that's a pretty safe car loan in their mind. Number one thing you got to understand is options are very complex, guys. And if you don't fully understand options at the end of this video, it's okay. It's okay. You're not, I would say you're in the minority if you do fully understand options at the end of this video and you don't already know what options are, guys. Options are very confusing. And so don't get frustrated with it, guys. Don't just say, I don't understand it because I didn't watch this video. So it's the end of things, guys. You take some time. Like it took me like months to fully understand options, guys. I watched videos on it online. I read books about it. I looked thing. I Googled a ton of things, guys. I called my brokerage and talked to them for hours on the phone, and they tried to explain some things to me, guys. I talked to my investing partner about it, guys. There's so much stuff, you know, and, and I'm a person who's actually decently intelligent when it comes to understanding money type matters, especially understanding anything in the stock market, guys. And it took me a long time to really understand options. And then once I did, I began to dabble in them and those kinds of things, guys. But it's not an easy subject, so I think that's very important to point out to you guys so you don't get too frustrated if you don't understand at the end of this video or you even look into it past this video and you still don't understand. It takes time, guys. It's not an easy subject. I just want to tell you guys that so you know and you don't get frustrated, okay? So, number two, um, options are, are, why do people even buy options? Why do people even play around with options? Options are really for three things. They're, they're because you're betting that there's going to be big downside on a stock. You're betting that there's going to be big upside on a stock or you need to hedge a position, guys. Those are the three main reasons why people even do options, guys. Either you're, you're planning on the stock's going to go up a lot over time, so I need to buy options on that. The stock's going to go down a ton, so I need to uh, buy put options or I need to hedge a position, guys. And the hedging part of positions is the one that we're not going to get too into today because that's the most confusing part about how to play things at, um, with hedging. So that's the part we will not really get into, guys, because I don't want to overload your brains because we got a lot of stuff to talk about with these options, guys. So number three, 
In order to do options, you have to have a brokerage account set up. So you have to have an account either through Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or Scott Trade or E-Trade or one of those places, guys. You can get it pretty much through any of them. There might even be some other stuff. Uh, I think Options House might be another website. I haven't looked into that one. So all those type of websites, you have to have a brokerage account if you want to trade options. Same as if you want to trade stocks. If you are under the age of 28 years old and you're watching this video right now, you need to get real serious about life if you are not serious. If you are over the age of 28, you need to absolutely preach to every young person you come across that they need to get serious about life. So many times growing up I heard, oh, just have fun when you're in those ages, like 18, you know, and when you're in your 20s, just have fun. You know, that's the best part of your life. That's the most enjoyable part of your life. You know why those people say that? Because those people didn't take those years seriously, and then they got to their late 20s, early 30s, they had to get a real job, they had to listen to a boss, they had to be a slave for the rest of their life. They had to be a slave for the rest of their life, listen to some prick boss that told them, do this, do that, you're not doing your job right, and their life just sucked after that. Their life just sucked because they didn't take that 18 to 28 year old time horizon seriously. They didn't focus around that. That's what I've heard time and time again. And, and so the next, if you're 18 years old and you're watching this right now, the next decade is key. You're gonna set your entire life up for success, failure, or mediocrity. Do you wanna be that person in the cubicle at 38 years old who has to listen to a boss on your ass 24 seven who makes your life miserable? You know, and you're, you're barely making ends meet. Do you want to be in that situation or do you want to be in a situation where you control your own, your own destiny? You have freedom. You can make your own decisions. That's the, those are the questions you have to ask yourself. So, I've absolutely treated it very seriously. I'm going to be 28 years old here in a few months. And um, I've done a lot so far. And everything I've done is has prepared me for the next level in my life. It has prepared me for the next level. I mean, everything from running track to getting a track scholarship to um, getting a good job at Quick Trip to then transferring from Arizona out to Charlotte, North Carolina at age 23 at age 23 to a whole new place where I knew no one to help my company expand. Like in, imagine how you know important that was in my life to be able to see how a billion dollar business expands in a new market. Like imagine, you know, that was probably way more valuable than any business class I could have ever taken in my life to actually get experience doing that, seeing it and performing it and executing that type of expansion. That's huge, guys. Like think about some of the stuff, you know, moving out to Nevada, starting my own small business, my real estate marketing company, right? Starting this channel, like uh, building from nothing to $200,000 and then in 2015 losing $75,000 because of greed. Like imagine all these experiences, all these things I've experienced already in my life, been married. Uh, I already have a kid. I got another one on the way in a few months. So I'll have two kids by the age of 28. Like I've done so much and experienced so much already in my life that has prepared me and got me to this level and, and has prepared me to where I'm going from 28 to 38, guys. So if you're watching this and you're in those ages right now, don't take this time for granted. Don't just focus around having fun or whatever because that fun is gonna catch up to you tenfold in the future. And you are gonna be stuck doing things you don't wanna do at all later on in life and that will make your entire rest of your life miserable. And you don't wanna be in that situation where your life is miserable because you're stuck in a situation you can't get out of because you didn't have the focus when you were younger. Now, how do you actually buy and sell stocks, all right? Well, first you need to set up a brokerage account. It's gonna be like an online brokerage account. There are a million different companies you can use, okay? Uh, depending upon where you're watching this in the world, some of these companies I have up here might be available to you, some of them might not, it depends. Not every company is available in every market, okay? But I can tell you like the majority of people that watch my channel are on one of these three platforms specifically. Robinhood, Fidelity or TD Ameritrade. Those are the three biggest for the people that actually watch my videos each and every day. Those are the three biggest for people that are in my private group and things like that, okay? And those brokerages all offer 
free trades. Essentially meaning like all you have to deposit is whatever amount of money you want to buy for that stock. You actually don't have to pay a commission every time you buy and sell. And it used to be back in the day, like when I got started, it was like $20 commission every time you bought or sold a stock. That no longer is like that, okay? Personally, I've been with Fidelity Investments since 2008, 2009, and I have nothing bad to say about the company. And so, you know, take that for what it is, but you know, when you do business with somebody for you know, well over a decade and you have nothing bad to say about them, that's probably a pretty good sign for a corporation out there, right? So those are the three main ones, but like I said, there's a million others you can do, okay? As far as when I go to buy a stock, if the market's open and it's during trading hours on Monday through Friday and the market's actually open and I'm going to buy a shares in a company, what I will do is I will buy them at market price. I get to see what the, the company's trading at. You know, you can download something like the Stock Tracker app and keep track of all your different stocks. You can see how, exactly where it's trading at, at that particular time. You can also see, you know, the, the live action of that stock being traded on these different apps like Robinhood, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, things like that. So I get to see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy is basically at a market price. You're gonna say market order. And that basically means it's gonna get traded at, as soon as you hit that button, it's gonna get traded at whatever, essentially that stock's price is pretty much trading at right after you hit that button, okay? And that's usually good for me. I'm not worried about one penny here, one penny there. I'm making long-term investments in companies. And if I'm worried about a penny here, penny there, uh, you know, it's probably not the right investment for me. I'm worried about making, you know, uh, let's just say a lot of money in a stock, not worried about a penny here, penny there, okay? As far as if the market's closed, you can still put in a buy order for a stock. It won't go through unless you have like after hours trading or something like that on which, this is a stock market for beginners video, so none of you guys will have like after hours trading or anything like that enabled on your accounts. But essentially, if I'm putting in an order and the market's closed, I like to put it for a certain price because you never know how the stock's gonna open that next day. It can open way up, way down, you don't, you don't know, and so you could end up paying a really bad price. So if, I, if the market's closed and I wanna buy a stock, I'll put it so the next day it will buy, but it will only buy it if, it's, if it hits a certain price. Now, if it doesn't hit that certain price, the shares don't get bought, right? You put in a buy at market price when the market's open, it's getting bought at whatever price it happens. But when it's at a certain price, it will only get bought if that price gets hit, okay? Same exact thing when it comes to when I go to sell a stock. If the market is open, I will sell at market price. Like, cause I get to see what it's trading at. Okay, let me sell it at market price, okay? Now, if the market's closed, I will put once again it to sell at a certain price because I wanted to, you know, obviously I don't wanna get, you know, a, a bad deal on the whole situation, okay? So number one thing we're talking about is dividends and how dividends are taxed. So the majority of people will be taxed on dividends at a 15% tax rate. A 15% tax rate. That's most people. Now, if you're a super high income, I believe it's $400,000 or more, you'll be taxed at 20%. But regardless, the dividends tax is generally gonna be way less than what you're paying as a normal tax person. I know me personally, I think I'm in the around the 28% tax bracket I'll be in for this year. So. Uh, paying 15% on dividends is a heck of a lot less than 28%, which is what I would normally be taxed at. So it's a big advantage to being basically invested in dividend stocks, stocks that pay you dividends, because basically you're taxed way less than you would be if you were actually making that money yourself and things like that, guys. So another way, you know, the tax we talked about on the, the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book the other day, I talked about how, you know, if you're you're an investor or you're a big business owner, the tax rules really are to your advantage. If you're a small business owner or just an employee, the tax rules are really against you. So this is another reason why being an investor is a great thing because you're taxed a lot less, guys. That's awesome. So that's number one. Dividends are taxed at 15% for most people. High, you know, income people are taxed at 20%. Number two. If you held a stock for more than, or excuse me, for less than a year and sold it for a profit, then you are gonna be taxed at your normal income rate. So like I said, I'm a, like a 28% tax bracket, right? So if I sell a stock, you know, and I make a $1 profit, I'm gonna be taxed on that stock at 28% because it's basically gonna go under normal income because it's capital gains held for less than a year. Now, the difference is, that goes into point number three, if you held a stock for more than a year and, and sold that stock, you'll be taxed at either that 15% or 20%, depending on your income. 
so a much less rate. Now, how do you actually research these stocks? Okay, well, first the stocks have to come to you. You have to, you know, maybe you looked, you were in a grocery store and you found some product and you're like, hmm, this product sells well. I love this product or I see everybody buying this. Let me look, okay, with this company, you look at the back of the product. Okay, this company, uh, you know, makes this product. Hmm, let me go ahead on my phone. Everybody's got a phone in their pocket, right? Let me Google and see if this is a public company. Sometimes it's gonna be a public company, sometimes it's not, okay? And so you can go ahead and you can start researching from there. Now in terms of if you're trying to get more stock ideas, okay? Like you can watch networks like CNBC, Bloomberg, and things like that. They have ticker symbols that go like on the bar and you can just like, like look at it and be like, oh, there's that ticker. Let me just type that in on my stock tracker app or Yahoo Finance or whatever and see like what that is, okay? Uh, maybe you hear somebody talk about it. You can read articles, Seeking Alpha, places like that. You know, those are definitely places that you can check out. Seeking Alpha is a place where people just write articles about stocks all the time. I can tell you Stock Hub. It's my free Discord chat I made. Like, all people do in there every single day is talk about stocks and different stocks and why they think this stock's good and this stock's bad and things like that. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how many ticker symbols are mentioned in a given day in Stock Hub during the, the trading hours. It's probably in the hundreds, if not in the thousands, okay? So I mean, the amount of, of action you can get from just joining somewhere like that's phenomenal. I'm getting, honestly, and then I have my private Discord chat, which like is, is available in my private group, I get, at least 50% plus, if not 75% plus, of my stock picks nowadays from actually inside my own private group's Discord chat. Because some, you know, everybody's like, you know, basically has my same mentality. So now I have thousands of people that are in this group that have my same mentality and are basically sifting through stocks all the time. And like, you know, some stocks I look into and I'm like, ah, oh, that's not a good one. Sometimes I look into it and it's like, this is amazing. So stocks can come to you from a million different places. There's no shortage. You can literally go on Google and type in S&P 500 stocks and look at a list of the S&P 500 or Russell 2000 stocks and like look at all the stocks in the Russell 2000. There's no shortage of stock ideas out there. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this clip. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up before you leave. If you wanna check out my live content, check out the main channel, Financial Education. If you wanna check out my other channel where I'm posting a ton on, check out Financial Education 3. If you're looking to join us in the private stock group, you're looking to join that community of over 100 millionaire investors in there. Many hundreds of folks that have six figures plus in the market. Check out the pinned comment down there to learn more. Much love, have a great day.